Hayes, tackle at Denison University, his first coaching job there. Then he moved on to Miami of Ohio in 1951. Ohio State called him. He went. He's won 231 football games. This man, Paul William Bryant, like Woody Hayes, 65 years of age this year. He played at the other end when Don Hudson was making his career at Alabama. His first head coaching job at Maryland, then on to Kentucky, off to Texas A&M for four years, and then his alma mater called him. Now, after 20 years at Alabama, his coaching record over those years, 272 victories. You might say it's about time we have the pleasure of watching Bear and Woody square off against each other. And they will do it today in the 44th annual Sugar Bowl game. This ABC Sports Exclusive is brought to you by all the new 1978 Chevrolets at your Chevrolet dealers everywhere. By Prudential for life, health, auto, or home insurance. When you think about your financial security, see a Prudential agent. Get a piece of the rock. Prudential Insurance. And by General Motors. People building transportation to serve people. Ohio State and Alabama on the season. The Buckeyes, finishing second in the Big Ten Conference to Michigan, won nine, lost two, ranked eighth in the Associated Press poll, ninth in the coaches' poll of UPI. Alabama with a record of 10 and 1, ranked third in both polls and the Southeastern Conference champions. And this will be the third Sugar Bowl game played inside the Superdome, the massive indoor sports marble of this era. It is said by the people from Tuscaloosa and the University of Alabama, they might well have sold 100,000 tickets for this football game. It is one of the earliest sellouts in the long-running history of the Sugar Bowl game. Perhaps only the Alabama-Notre Dame game of 1974 created more national interest than stir. Hello, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, and a Happy New Year to all of you from all of us at ABC Sports as we settle in for what should be an exciting afternoon of college football here in New Orleans, Louisiana. It is said by many people that teams reflect the character of the coaches. If that is so, we should be in for a grand afternoon of college football because the posture of Woody Hayes and Bear Bryant among their contemporaries is awesome. Cast aside all the numbers that they have compiled over the years. Just consider the men themselves and the influence on so many lives that they have had over so many years. Just think, 65 years influencing young men who have gone on to all walks of life. They bring nobility, they bring dignity, they bring honor, and they bring excitement. They will have this afternoon one of the top football games of the year. And right now, let's meet some of the key players. When you start looking for key people on a football team, you can look to a handful of them, like these four for Ohio State. First, the quarterback, the man that pulls the trigger for the Buckeyes, number eight, Rod Gerald. He is a junior out of Dallas, Texas, a two-year starter at quarterback, and quick is the best adjective you can give him, uncanny ability to move that option offense. A year ago, he was named the top offensive player in the Orange Bowl. He'd like to repeat it in New Orleans, but big tailback Ron Springs, number 23, is the man who led the Buckeyes in rushing and pass receiving this season. Only the sixth Buckeye back ever to gain 1,000 yards or more in a season. He caught 14 passes to lead in that category as well. Defensively, number 36, Tom Cousineau, linebacker, this 247-pound junior, the top defensive player in the Orange Bowl, but he played there a year ago. He had 129 tackles this past season. Get used to the name. You're going to hear it a lot before the day is done. There are some who say 44 is the best athlete on this Ohio State team, Ray Griffin. Yep, one of the Griffin boys, 5'9", 182, a senior. The center fielder, the safety, played tailback in two games this season with injuries cut into the ranks. For the Alabama Crimson Tide, here are four men who must play well today if the Tide are to have success. Let's begin with the trigger man, the quarterback, Jeff Rutledge. His number is 11, and he is the man because his handling of the option, the run, and the pass will be so important as to how it goes for Alabama. Intercepted only five times this season, all five of them coming in their only loss, that to Nebraska. Everybody's All-American, number 82 in Ozzie Newsom. Not just a wide receiver, this big guy plays tight end sometimes, returns kicks, but most of all, he makes remarkable catches of passes. Fair Bryant says he's the best he has ever had at an in position. Number 38 is the man every play starts with. The big fullback, Johnny Davis, the bull, 247 pounds, carried 182 times for 931 yards. Four-year average, five and a half yards a carry. 
The other back, Tony Nathan, the tailback, number 22, but don't be deceived. This other back scored 15 touchdowns this season, averaging better than six yards per carry. These are some of the key people today. Those are some of the people we'll be watching this afternoon. With me this afternoon, our commentator, a man who had a very happy moment here in 1974 as Notre Dame beat Alabama 24-23, Eric Parsikian. You've got some more memories for this old town, don't you? I really do, Keith, and uh, one of the problems every football coach has to face when he takes a team to a bowl is preparation. Um, and Ohio State, as a result of weather and facilities in Columbus, brought his football team, Woody Hayes did, on the 20th of December. They've been here, this is the 14th day. I know we're all creatures of habit. We get leg weary. We like to eat in the same spot. We like to sleep in our beds. Unfortunately, they have not been able to do that. Mayor Bryant brought his team in here on December the 29th. He's only been here a few days. I think they're more at home in a sense. This is, this is a philosophy that we used when we came down here in 1973 and 74 to play in the Sugar Bowl Classic. It may be of importance as this game wears on. Let's look for some significance of it in the third and fourth period. Where then do you think this game might swing since they are so evenly matched if you consider the numbers? I think the things for the fans to watch in this ball game is the scrambling of Rod Gerald. If the Alabama defense can contain Rod Gerald, their percentages of winning this ball game will jump up dramatically. Another key matchup will be Aaron Brown, number 55, the middle guard of the Ohio State defensive team, and Johnny Davis, a great fullback, number 38. If Aaron Brown can beat Davis to three yards or under and allow the linebackers, Cousin Owen Atkins, to flow with the ball, then this will be a great advantage to them. Another thing that Ohio State going to be faced with is the constant big play threat of Ozzie Newsom. He can do it at any time, and our defense is going to be have to be alert for 60 minutes. Alabama is now coming into the Superdome, and you can hear that roar. Obviously, there are more people here from Alabama than from Ohio State. Both teams out on the field jumping around. You would think this was the opening game of the season. <laughs> well, it sounds like and nobody is more statistically even in this particular game. One might think, Keith, that Alabama is a passing team and Ohio State is a winning team. Yet you look at the statistics and you find that Ohio State has thrown the ball 97 times. And uh, Alabama's thrown the ball 107, one more time per game. And the percentage completion is exactly the same, right around 60%. So it's a very evenly matched ball game. We look forward to it. The coaches have had all of the pregame publicity. They've been the dominant factors and personalities. But now they're just going to go to the sidelines and turn it over to the players and see what happens in this 44th annual Sugar Bowl game from the Superdome in New Orleans, Alabama and Ohio State. I miss my wife and kid. Yeah. <laughs> After a while on the road, you get used to being away from the family. Bowl, a special version of ABC's Wide World of Sports. The officials for today's ball game are out of the Southwest Conference. The referee is Percy Penn, the umpire Richard Scoball, the linesman W.C. Coleman, line judge Roland Doss, back judge Tim Hatch, field judge J.D. Rowland. And the way things have been going in crucial big ball games, both... At the college level and at the professional level, the men wearing the striped shirts become very important people, don't they? Alabama will kick off. Ohio State winning the toss will receive the inside weather conditions. Very comfortable, 72 degrees, and obviously no wind or weather problem. But outdoors, it's only 42 degrees. It rains some off and on through the night and the morning. So, once again, the indoor sports arena pays off for a major football game of the 1970s. And this one, I suspect, Eric Barsikin will go down into the books as one of the great ones of all time, if these two teams can play to their potential this afternoon. Keith, I certainly agree with that. I want you to consider the fact that one team is 10 and 1, that's Alabama. The other team is 9 and 2. They may be two of the best teams in the country with those kinds of records. James Harrell, number 11, will go deep to return the kickoff. Back there with him will be Jeff Logan and Ron Spring. James Harrell will return, they hope, Roger Chapman's kick if he knocks it straight down the middle. The ball game is underway. Kick is short to the stick to Harrell. The left Curtis Simpson side comes in a hurry with Johnny Faust, number 44. The starting backfield, wandering through the streets of this lovely old city of New Orleans, Rod Gerald, number 8, at quarterback. Ron Springs, number 23, will be the tailback. 
Fullback will be Jeff Logan, number 34, and he is completely healthy for the game. Jim Harrell, who just returned that kickoff, is the flanker. So here come the Buckeyes on artificial turf, first down from the 20. Herman Jones is now in at the flanker position as Harrell has come out. Ohio State working out of the eye formation. Rod Harrell stands up, takes the pass, keeps it, and tries to stand up. He gets to the line of finish, and that's as far as he can go. The offensive front for the Ohio State Buckeyes, shown to you here as they walked about the streets of New Orleans in warm weather. And it's a great big bunch of fellas. Jimmy Moore, the tight end, big Chris Ward at 270, the offensive tackle All-American, Mark Lang at the guard position. The center is Tim Bogler, who's shaken off all of the leg trouble he had earlier. Ken Fritz is the offensive guard for Ohio State. And Joe Robinson at the other tackle with Bill Jaco, the tight end. It is second down and ten as Harrell comes back in. Looks like the flankers are going to be bringing in plays or suggested plays from Woody Hayes. Joe wants to throw. He does throw deep. He throws it down the sideline and pinned it for Charles Hunter, who has come in at an end position, and he could not run it down with Don McNeil covering for Alabama. The Alabama defensive unit lines up with Wayne Hamilton, Marty Lyons, Terry Jones, David Hanna, and Dewey Mitchell, a five-man front formerly, with Barry Cross and Rich Wingo. Working at the linebackers, Don McNeil, Mike Tucker, Murray Legg, and Ricky Tucker are the defensive secondary people. So it is third down and ten for the white-shirted Ohio State Buckeyes from Columbus. The ball is ridden off this time to the fullback, and he's up close to the 30-yard line and very close to the first down. Jeff Logan, number 34, the senior out of North Canton, carrying the ball. And they're going to mark the nose of the football just short of the 30-yard line. It'll bring up fourth down and about a foot. And it looks like, Aaron, that Woody has an opportunity, if he chooses here, to gamble a little. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised, though. They hesitated a little bit. But now they're coming with a kicking team, and certainly early in the ball game, that's exactly what I would do. I think uh, Ohio State used a pretty good play there on the second play, throwing a long pass. Well, the psychological thing is that he hit it fine, but they didn't, of course. But that'll loosen up the secondary of Alabama, maybe open up some running opportunities. Bob Morris in to do the punting for Ohio State. He gets off a beauty and drives uh, Tony Nathan all the way back to the 19. Nathan has a crease, and he comes back outside the 35. He did up to the outside of the picket, beating it long ball. That was a 51-yard punt and a fine return. The Crimson Tide sends this group of young men to the field to start out. Jeff Rutledge at quarterback and Tony Nathan at tailback. Mitch Ferguson will be a halfback. And Johnny Davis is the fullback out of the wishbone. Ozzie Newsom, of course, the All-American split in. And virtually every play for Alabama, if they're in the wishbone, certainly is going to start with some kind of fake or movement for the big fullback, Davis. Newsom goes in now to play a tight end position. They're given to the second man, Cole Nathan. And Nathan coming over the right side. Goes 40. The offensive front for the Alabama Crimson Tide, pretty good sized group. David Sadler, Lou Green at guard, Dwight Stevenson, the center, and he's playing against Aaron Brown. Bob Kreider at guard, a very good one. Jim Bunch, not all that tall, but he's a tough one. At tackle and Rick Neal will be the tight end. It is second down. Let's call it, we'll get him all the way out to the 42. Make it second down and four. goes up the middle for an Alabama first down. And I'll tell you right now, if he's able to keep those linebackers at home today and run up the middle, Ohio State's going to have trouble with Paul Ross, Byron Cato, Aaron Brown, Gary Doolin, and Kelvin Danzler, the defensive front. Linebackers are very good ones, Tom Cousineau and Dave Atkins. And the secondary for the Buckeyes, Mike Guess, Lenny Mills, Ray Griffin, and Drew Electro. It's first down, Alabama, at their own 47-yard line. The long remaining back, hammers it up the middle, goes to the Ohio State 49. He gets the better part of four yards on the carry. They're giving them a lot of different defensive sets or offensive sets in there, trying to confuse the Ohio State defense. One of the things that impressed me that the player goal keep was Blue Green, number 58. After they made that first down, he was really excited. He's jumping up and down. This Alabama team is pumped up. First offensive possession can be very important in a Contest. No doubt about it. Well, it's second down and six. 
comes over midfield. The ball is given to Davis, and they are testing the inside of the Ohio State defense early as they're running right at Aaron Brown, the middle guard, and he gets about three yards on that carry. Here's the problem that Aaron Brown, number 55, has in the middle. And he's got to take on not only uh, the Stevenson, the center for Alabama, but he's got that big horse Davis coming at him uh, like a runaway truck. And boy, he really is. I'll tell you, that Davis is a strong runner. He had almost 1,000 yards this year, 931 and five touchdowns, and he gets that crucial yardage in there. It is third down. They need almost well, it be three yards. Bolden is in. Rutledge on the option. Pitches it out. And it is Major Ogilvy, number 41, who takes it across the 45. Cousin all makes the tackle for Ohio State. And uh, we'll have a look to see whether or not it's a first down. Here's the Ohio State linebacker. Here's what the linebackers have to do. They throw the play, of course. Rutley keeps the ball, did a good job. You see Cousin all coming all the way across the field. He's the leading tackler, number two tackler, with 129 involvements during the course of the year. And he's a super football player. He was hurt in the Oklahoma game, and it might have uh, hurt the Ohio State team in that contest. Correct the call on the carry. It was Mitch Ferguson, 41, coming outside. First down, Alabama, at the Ohio State, 42. Davis, up the middle, to the 35, seven yards. Atkins and Fresno make the tackle, and Stevenson did his job that time on Aaron Brown to give Davis the running room. Johnny now 19 yards and full carry. Now this is the thing that uh, the wishbone works on, if they can keep those linebackers at home with Davis doing the job inside as he did there. That's when to open up the off tackle and the outside option. Second down, three. Davis, pulls it down. And it's another Alabama first down as he hammers to the Ohio State 27. Look into the middle of the line and what's happening. up in here between Aaron Brown and John Davis. You see here the blocking of Dwight Stevenson on the line, moving Brown out of there, and of course the result of a long Johnny Davis game. Right now the winning of that particular match is in the hands of John Davis and Dwight Stevenson. First down at the Ohio State 27-yard line. Alabama started at its own 36. Rough it. Uh-oh. Humble! And it looked like Jeff got his ball back as he... Went down, faked it to his fullback, trying to belly it off to Davis, and in the bumping process, the ball popped loose. The offensive comparison of the two teams this year, we mentioned previously that they're very, very close in, in the numbers, and you can see there they are. <laughs> they really are, and it's all gone near every category. It is second down, out near the 28 now, loss of about a half yard on the fumble. Alabama with the ball at the Ohio State 28. Rutledge gives it to Davis in the middle. And Davis goes bolting over the middle. He is brought down by Cousinall and Gary Doolin, defensive tackle. But he again got good yardage as he moves for six. It'll be third and four, and Davis now has 33 yards. Ohio State has to keep Davis under the three-yard mark on those plays. Otherwise, all the advantage is going to go to the Alabama ball club. Of course, they're sitting there with Nathan in the backfield and five to the outside. Well, can Ferguson for that matter. Ferguson got the first down on their last third down conversion, but they play with Johnny Davis. And Davis running behind his right guard, Fighter, and Bunch may have another Alabama first down. This time, Aaron Brown got part of the tackle, but not as soon as he wanted. First down, five. Good. Alabama looks awful good on this drive, and the uh, ability of Davis to maintain the yardage necessary on his inside is very impressive. That's going to keep those linebackers. are going to have to bring more help to the inside, and then, of course, that's what the wishbone wants. The next thing you know, as you mentioned, Nathan will turn the corner on you. The football is at the Ohio State 17. This time, they're able to get Davis. His momentum and his strength will carry him just short of the 15 for the better part of two yards on the carry. But considering what he has been doing to the interior of the Buckeye defense, that's a victory for the men up front in Ohio State. The defensive comparison of the two teams, you can see the Buckeyes have been a very reluctant defense 
throughout the years. Who, for that matter, has Alabama? Though Alabama's defense, I think, has improved considerably every week since they defeated Southern California. Neal comes wide to the left side for Alabama. And off to the second man, Tony Nathan. Nathan's inside for 10. No, it is Ogilvy, 42, who has slipped into the backfield. Well, you got the commitment of the linebackers to the inside. Look at Davis come in here. And you get the linebackers flying in there trying to stop him. And they get the ball to Nathan, and he picks up a good yardage, or rather, uh, Major Ogilvy. And that's what happens in the wishbone. We're looking at it. He's only a freshman. It's third down. They need about two yards with Nathan now back in the wishbone for Alabama. With Davis to the fullback up close. It goes to Tony Nathan, the second man, cutting over the right side, and he looks like he'll have a first down right around the Ohio State six-yard line with Julen making the tackle for the Buckeyes. team, you know, has averaged 413 yards on the, in the every game that they've played, so they can move it, and they're doing it here on this drive. James in the second. It is the first down, and then some. This will be the 14th play coming up with no passes in Alabama's first defensive possession of the ball game. They started back on their 36. They have it first and goal to go just outside the Ohio State six-yard line with Luther Henson and Mark Sullivan now moving into the goal line defense for the Buckeyes. Ferguson, Mason, and Davis to set back behind Rutledge. Give it to Davis. And they hold him right at the line of scrimmage. So that time, the Buckeye defense anticipating the big fullback was going to get the ball, and uh, they stopped him. Cousinaw came up to block the hole, and there was also a good deal of help from Paul Ross, who plays the open side defensive end position for the Buckeyes. Ross and Danzler are very good defensive ends, and particularly Ross playing the field side. It is second down and goal to go from the sixth. There. Not much. Maybe the five-yard line as Nathan carried. They faked it to Davis and gave it to Tony Nathan. And Ohio State's swarming defense was right there with the two linebackers particularly evident, Atkins and Cousinall. Well, it's tough down in there. They go to goal line defense. They have less area to try to defend. And you can commit more people to the run. Let's see whether or not they put it up here. Bolden has come out. Ozzie Houston has come in at the wide receiver position. He lines up against Mike Kent. He's much bigger than Guest. Lutwick gives it inside, though. And it's fourth down and goal to go from about the three. Looks like uh, about fourth down about two. Let's see, I think they're going to go for a field goal here. Now they're going to go for it, looks like. I don't see Chapman coming out. Newsom coming back off the field, and Bolton comes back in for Alabama. So looks like they're going to go for it. They're going to go. Yeah. Well, he figures if he doesn't make it, he'll leave Ohio State in that kind of position there. Fourth and goal from the three. Luckily, didn't make it. Dave Askin made the stop. Dave Askin stopped him. Go to the goal line. And now the emotion swings to the other side of the field. From Ohio State. Oh, Alabama, after a long time to set me in the two drive, 17 plays later, we have no score. Head-to-head -head competition as the Pro Bowlers Tour begins its 17th season Saturday on ABC. 17 plays, 8 minutes and 20 seconds on this fourth down play. Rutledge coming down the line, looking for the end zone, and you see sliding through there, Dave Atkins, the linebacker, number 94, and also flowing very well with the play of a defensive end to keep them contained and so Alabama comes away empty. Oh, well, it's a good gamble though considering where they've allowed the high state to have the ball here. Buckeyes go to work now from the three yard line and run for Jeff Logan. And Ron Springs in the backfield and it's Logan hitting out near the 10. You know, early in the ball game you want to score a touchdown and if you don't get it, as Alabama didn't get it, particularly early here, it's not that big a deal because they've allowed Ohio State to have the ball in crucial territory back in their own three-yard line. First, they pushed it out to the 10 here. Got a timeout here. The 
football is hitting at the 10, where it is second down and three to go for Ohio State. Something stopped the clock at 4-5-2 to go in the first quarter. And I guess the clock is stuck. The line judge saw it and notified the referee, Percy Penn, and so they've called time now to come across to the sidelines to see whether or not we can repair the clock. Coming up on next Saturday, January 7th, ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Hula Bowl, live from Honolulu. That'll be at 4 Eastern time, and we'll have many of the nation's top senior football all-stars. Anticipating a lot of fun, as we always have, at the Hula Bowl next Saturday. Here in New Orleans, time is out, first quarter, no score. Terry has just found out about that thing on ABC. Time is still out here at the Superdome in New Orleans. The clock is stuck. You can build the most marvelous uh, building in the world, I guess, but you can't always be sure that everything inside of it is going to function at, uh, in the proper manner. But right now, we're trying to resolve the clock problem. With no score in the football game after Alabama held the football for 8 minutes and 20 seconds, then Woody Hayes saw his Ohio State Buckeye defense get tough down inside the 10-yard line and hold Alabama four times with Dave Atkins making the killer play. It is second down and three after Logan had run for seven. Paul Campbell is now in at fullback, and the ball is given to Campbell, and Campbell gets it out to the 14, and that will be an Ohio State first down, the first of the afternoon for the Buckeyes. Looks to me like the clock is still stuck, so we're not going to be able to give you the time as it ticks away. It will be kept by the officials. But Ohio State does have its first first down of the afternoon up near the 15-yard line. Rod Gerald, the quarterback for the Buckeyes, Campbell, the man who carried, and Campbell's going to play a lot today at fullback because he has been improving steadily, but Logan right now is back in there. A little bit quicker. Rod Gerald gives it to Logan, and Logan flies through the air out to the 22. Well, if he'd have kept his feet, uh, he came through there uh, zooming, I'll tell you. Well, that's good. Uh, Ohio State has made a good march from their own three-yard line. They're out beyond the 20 and out of that real serious threatening area. And he's running the ball. Doug Mackey is in an offensive tackle now, replacing Joe Robinson for Ohio State. Second down and two for the Buckeyes, and Rod Carroll turns it up to about the 25, and it looks like the junior from Dallas, out of Oak Cliff in Dallas, will be very close to his first down. He's got it. First down. Guys, starting at their own three now, have moved for successive first half. Alabama committed themselves to an eight-man front that time to stop the running game and did a good job on it, actually, because the uh, Ohio State team didn't have that far to go for the first down. But we may see more eight-man front as Ohio State tries to dominate the running game. But remember, Joe put the ball up 97 times this year and was well over 50% in his passing. First down at the 25. Joe lies it off to the first man coming out of the line formation. And the again is right near the 26 yard line as Jeff Logan. Jeff only weighs 184 pounds. He certainly has had an exciting career. Logan, along with Chris Ward and all the seniors on this Ohio State team, have only had two Rose Bowls, one Orange Bowl, and now the Sugar Bowl in their career. <laughs> That's not bad, is it? No, sir. <laughs> they haven't missed much. Robinson back in at the offensive tackle now for Ohio State. The football is sitting out near the 27. Call it second down and about eight. Huh? And procedure coming here against Ohio State. Um, Number 99, uh, Jimmy Moore, moved ahead of the snap of the ball. Oklahoma jumped to that eight-man front again, uh, and it looked like maybe Gerald won the autobolize against it. He may have had a broken play as a result of it. That'll back him up five, and it'll make it second down and about 13 yards to go for their first down. That is the first penalty of the ball game. These two teams have not been penalized very much. They don't beat themselves. But, uh, I think With 21 penalty. yards uh, per game for Ohio State, and I think 32 for Alabama. Really super. Second down, right at 13, 14 yards, and a handoff goes inside. And the game is out to the 27 by Jeff Logan, number 34. Noting back the three losses uh, that the total losses by both these teams. Alabama got beat by Nebraska out of mistakes. 
And an uncertain defensive ball game for them on that particular Saturday. Ohio State's loss to Oklahoma certainly born out of uh, mistakes. And as uh, well as the loss to Michigan. Don't do it often. It's third down and nine in the 27. Harold goes in motion, turns up field. Zero, back to throw. Goes over the middle. It is complete to Carl Hunter. Hunter at the end, hooked back into the middle. And Zero nailed him on the money. Out here, the 40 first down Buckeyes. Really a uh, quick pass by Rod Gerald. He takes the sprint draw and back into the pocket, and he throws it right between three or four Alabama defenders. Well executed play. Football is placed beyond the 40 at the 40. Well, very near the 42, actually, where it's first down. Harrell is in the ball game along with Herman Jones. Double wide left for the Buckeyes. New formation. Gerald up to that way gives the run spring. And he is to the 46, his legs taken from under him by number 21, Mike Tucker, a senior from Anniston, Alabama. Mike Tucker's not a very big guy. He's 6 foot 174, but he put on a good tackle wall, I'll tell you. Good support. Game, four yards, second down, six coming up. Kind of different to see uh, there on the sidelines without his hat. No, yeah, he's not running indoors. And that should be the end of the quarter. Remind you that the clock has been stuck. We were not able to give you the time as it ran along, but we have played 15 minutes of football in the 44th Sugar Bowl game, and we have finance, health care, education, and many more, for which we've designed communication systems to answer business problems. We're not just designing a symbol for your industry. We're redesigning the Bell Systems marketing approach to serve your needs. as he gets it up to the 47. Barry Krause, number 77, leading this group of tacklers. Once again, we see how important linebackers are. Here he is going with the play, and it's awful tough to option a football team that does nothing but do option, and that's Alabama. They work against the option on a regular basis. Here's Krause getting over in on the play and does a great job. Rich Wingo is also there. Third down and five for Ohio State. Third down. Gerald wants to put it up. He's one for one. He missed possession, and it is Murray Legg diving for the interception after it was tipped by Dewey Mitchell, and he couldn't quite come up with it. And so Ohio State now will kick it away. What leg? He almost got it. He might have been on his way, uh, Keith, if he had grabbed this one. He had a lot of daylight in front of him. This Rod Gerald just sprints out to the left, turns, throws the ball here, more of a deliberate type of action. Here it is. Well, I guess he would have tripped and fallen, but at least he'd have got the interception if he held on to the ball. Dewey Mitchell, the man who tipped it, and in the puck now, it's Morris for Ohio State. He had a 51 yard of the first time. This was not quite as long as Tony Nathan comes up the field and calls fair catch for Alabama at their own 24 yard line. And the clock is working again with 14 11 to go in the first half. No score. You want to start something? 1978 debut with the world's leading athletes in wild competition this Sunday on ABC. Cotton Bowl game, Notre Dame, Texas. All even at 3-3. First quarter of play. We'll keep you advised of the running score over there. As we have no score here, and it is first down Alabama in the Super Bowl at their own 24-yard line. Jeff Rutley. And the ball off inside over the right tackle. It is Mitch Ferguson carrying it. The sophomore out of Augusta brought down by Kelvin Hansberg from Warren, Ohio. And so Ferguson 
has carried the ball twice in the game and picked up substantial yardage both times. Seven on that carry. Through counterplay, they faked the ball to the fullback to the left, and Rumpich turned and handed it off, and all the four of the linebackers went for Davis trying to stop him. Ryder in bunch opening the door for Ferguson on the right side of the line. again, too, with 13, 18 to go in the first half. Come on. Long count, quite likely an audible by Rutledge. Looks like the left side of the line might have jumped. He's going deep. He can go there. How's he has it? First down, Alabama, at the 36-yard line. And we do have a penalty flag thrown. I thought the left side of the Alabama line did jump. Well, I think they got a uh, personal foul back on Rutley. Here's Newsom just breaking down the field, breaks to the outside. He had single coverage and did a great job. Rutley's put it right in there. He beat Mike Gass on single coverage. Let's see if we can see whether Rutley gets knocked down here. There he throws the ball. Well, we can't see it there. And it is going to go that way, Aaron. Apparently Aaron Brown ran into him as he was trying to put the pressure on him and they're going to mark it off. It was a 29-yard pass play. And uh, now the ball with the penalty goes all the way to the Ohio State 22. Here's what happened. Brown jumps up. Rutledge is gone. Oh, he should have tried to avoid him. Foolish penalty. So that is a mistake. And it puts Alabama first down at the Ohio State 22. Lockridge to him just a little bit too high. Ozzie trying to get a, get his feet under him to get into the air to jump for it. Hello. Mike Jess defending on it. Newsom was Hello. open. He's really something. You know, the thing that's amazing to me about Newsom is that you don't realize it when you look at him. But he's six foot three, 218 pounds. Now he looks more like a 190 pounder from here, but he can really fly. We've seen him on a number of occasions in the last two years come up with one big play after the other. Guess on the other hand, 5'11, 175. So well, he's outsizing him. Now there's some Rick Neal in there against Guess. Newsom goes the other side. Second down 10, Ohio State 22. Johnny Davis inside the 20 to the 18. and Aaron Brown, 55, on the tackle for Ohio State. They mark him at the 19 of the three yards. Tried to split him out that time by formation and slipped the ball to Davis, but uh, Ohio State defended it well. So time now is called by Alabama as Rutledge comes to the sidelines to talk with Fairbride and the Tide coaching staff with third and long coming from the Ohio State 19 and no score against the world in international amateur boxing. Great slam bang action on ABC. Third down and seven for Alabama at the Ohio State 19. It's conceivable this could be where we get a gadget play because Newsom is in the backfield. He's at the tailback position. Bolden comes wide to the right. Oh, that's Nathan breaking out of there. And Rutledge wants to throw it. He's got Davis wide open if he can see him. He throws it to Nathan, and Nathan gets it down to the 10-yard line for an Alabama first down. <laughs> Rick Neal was also open. <laughs> Not only that, but we were talking about Gerald scrambling and Rutley really scrambling. Here's Neal that comes up the field. He's wide open in the end zone, just standing there, and I think, of course, uh, Davis was open, so he's looking for the ball there, but there's no ball in <laughs> I tell you, poor Jeff is running around back there with a bunch of trees chasing him, though. You can't always see a whole lot from there when you're oh, running for your life. 
Well, it creates some real problems by putting Newsom in the eye position. All right, they put Ferguson wide to the right. Nathan's a deep man. Davis out of the eye with Newsom to the left side. And it's Davis. And he's to the sixth for four yards. On first and goal to go for Alabama at the Ohio State 10. Densler and Atkins made the tackle for Ohio State. Well, we can expect goal line defense out of Ohio State now, which makes it a little bit tougher down in here. Mark Sullivan comes in, too, to beef up the goal line defense along with Luther Henson. Second and goal from the Buckeye Six. overthrown and Isaac Newsom was high in the air over Mike Guess and again it's a matter of size Newsom at 6'3 and a great leaper and 218 pounds Guess at 5'11 175 no more apparent than right there Keith as you pointed out Newsom just broke to the outside and turned to the corner and even Guess was right there if the ball had been a little bit lower he'd had a touchdown Newsom started off the field now he's going to come off as Bolton goes in to replace him. They line up in the rich zone with Nathan and Ferguson behind David. On third and goal, Ferguson now sprints out to the right, goes into a wide position. Rutledge gives the ball to oh, Bolton coming around into reverse. And they stop him short of the goal line at the one. Bruce Bolton coming around on a reverse. Almost got in. But Tom Cousinaw makes a tough play to keep him out of there. Rutledge takes a big fake to Davis, puts the ball in there, and he just about gets into the end zone here. Let's see how... Well, another step, and he's gotten to the corner, gotten that ball into the end zone. Fourth down from the one. The ball is just inside the one with 11.33 to go in the first half. And Alabama is going. Buckeyes held him on the three the last time. Nathan! Roger Chapman is in to try for the extra point out of Kevin Jones' hole. It's good. And so we finally have a score with 11.31 to play in the first half. Tony Nathan goes over the top from the one, and Alabama leads it 7 to nothing. We've accepted the challenge, and that is to make these cars lighter and superior in terms of structure and fuel economy. Dr. Kurt Vail, Structural Analysis. This is who we are and what we do at General Motors. Weight is not necessary. You can compensate for it in terms of structure and tuning the vehicle. With advanced computers and aerospace technology, this is completely possible now. It's just like a person. If you remove the fat in the right way, then you end up being in better physical condition to boot. If we did not take the weight out of these cars, there would eventually be a massive change in our lifestyle. And I don't think that anybody wants to, to move away from the freedom that you get with personal transportation. General Motors, people building transportation to serve people. Sunday, the major motion picture of our time, Nashville. 76 yards, 10 plays, 2 minutes and 40 seconds in contrast to that 8.20 possession they had in the first quarter and came away empty. Going deep now, James Harrell, number 11 for Ohio State, and Chapman will kick off for Alabama. Jeff Logan and Ron Springs go back there with Harrell, and we have 11.31 to play in the first half. 7 nothing, Alabama. Chapman hits it hard and high. And 
comes out to the 21, where Mike Tucker makes the tackle with help from John Crow. And now the Alabama defense is in on the field as Ohio State comes out with the offensive unit to try to retaliate. Buckeyes have all three timeouts remaining, Alabama two. Outside the 20. Gerald gives it off inside to his fullback. Coming out of the eye formation, it is Jeff Logan. And Logan hits him for about three. Season premiere entering the 17th season. The Pro Bowlers tour live from Florence, California next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern, 1.30 Central, and 4 Pacific time. The Pro Bowlers tour with Chris Sinkle. One of the longest running sports television series in the country, and one of the most successful. Second down, let's call it seven from the 23. Gerald to throw it. He's one out of three. He's got a run, and he paid the price at the 24. Good job by the Alabama defense. Gerald won a scramble out. The coverage was good, and they were able to contain him, so they only made a yard or so. Marty Lyons made him change his mind about the pass, along with Terry Jones and then Dewey Mitchell sandwiched him. Ball is at the 24-yard line. It is third down and a long six with 10-20 to go in the first half. Buckeye offense has not been able to untrack. Under pressure, hits his man. He nailed him. Charles Hunter, number 89, a sophomore from New York, Delaware. And the advance of the ball is out beyond the 35. It will be an Ohio State first down. Good delivery by Gerald here, right? Eh? Uh, he's a better passer than a lot of people give him credit for. Here he comes rolling back, makes his quick draw, and delivers the ball. Good coverage by Alabama, but he got the ball in there. Buckeyes come up now, and they send Harold to the tight side, near the hash mark. Joe gives the ball off to this fullback, and maybe a yard, certainly no more than that. In comparison between the two in the ball game, Gerald now two out of four, so is Rutledge, but Rutledge ball club on the, primarily on one big class pass play, and then a penalty tacked on to it, and then a leap by Bill Mason, and they lead seven to nothing. Second down and nine. Paul Campbell now at fullback for Ohio State. Gerald is through it, throws it through it, and it ricochets right back to him. Oh, oh, my goodness. He almost had an opportunity to catch it and run with it as that ball come ricocheting back to it. Now, what is happening here, Alabama's going to an eight-man defense, which opens up some uh, passing opportunities. Her mighty lines come rushing in. Oh, they really hit Gerald there. Woo! I mean, there was some contact. Byron Bragg, big freshman out of Montgomery, 6'6", 271 pounds, was the guy who stood up and snuck that ball away. Terry Urich has scored now. Notre Dame leads Texas 10-3 in the Cotton Bowl. Third down and nine from the 36 for Ohio State. Gerald to put it up again. Now he's going to run it. He throws it short, but a knuckleball it upfield, and it is incomplete. Alabama's quick defense able to penetrate. And it looked like Ricky Gilliland, linebacker, has slid off into that short zone area and deflected the ball. So it is going to be fourth and nine, and the Buckeyes will have to punt it away. Alabama's on the shutout of the year against Miami, 36 zip. But it's a defensive team that improves steadily, and a lot of sophomores and freshmen involved in it. Nathan is deep, number 22, for the tide. The key back by Horace, it is, back to punt. Hang time in that one as Nathan comes up and goes down. Hard driving downfield tackle for Ohio State to nail him right down. A 36-yard punt, but it really hung up there. The superstar premieres 
It is preliminary next Sunday at 2 Eastern, 1 Central, and Pacific time. This year, the Superstars competition is being held in the Bahamas. That's an afternoon of laughing at mistakes as the great athletes of the world step out of their own arenas and try something else. From the 24-yard line for Alabama, first down. They lead 7-0. Looks like Rutledge, uh, diving for it, may have recovered it. Fumble to snap from Stevenson. That's a rarity for him. That uh, quarterback center exchange generally is pretty efficient. Oh, he the ball a little earlier. Eh? He didn't get it from the center that time. White may be uh, so involved trying to keep Aaron Brown out of there and you know, try to control him. But uh, maybe causing part of it. They actually gained the better part of a yard on the fumble. So call it second down and nine from the 25. Major Ogilvy, the freshman out of Birmingham, number 42, running the ball. And he's up to near the 28 before he is brought out. Back in the day, just a couple of seasons ago, when Bear Bryant was playing so many people, he was about 10, 12 running backs at you, and he's now beginning to use his freshman quite a bit. So he has no hesitancy about sending Ogilvy towards the team. Lou Eichner and Johnny Faust in there to arrest his people. Johnny Davis so far has gone all the way. It's third down, maybe six. But they want to throw it now. Jumps it off. Ogilvy has it. And he may have a first down. Out beyond the 35-yard line, Aaron Brown came in and was really trying to eat Jeff Ruffin alive, but Jeff jumped it off to Ogilvy, and he got a first down. Got that ball off, Keith. comes back. He's looking for Newsom. It looks like they've got him dead back here, and he gets the ball away before he's knocked down. And they wind up with a first down with Major Ogilvy carrying the ball for the first one. Byron Cato, big tackle, actually had uh, Jeff around the waist, but he still unloaded it. So it's first down at the 35 of Alabama. Davis. Three yards. Second down, seven. This time, Aaron Brown did his thing the way the book says. We say that's, that was the matchup in there, and up to this point, uh, Davis Stevenson have had the winning margin here. Here is Aaron Brown, sheds the double team this time, and puts a good tackle on John Davis. Davis now 13 carries and 49 yards, and each 20 more to reach 1,000 in the 1977 season. Again. And Riley Flagg, you're going to face Master. Yep. Denzler and Adkins were the men who made the tackle, and one of them reached in, and it just happened that the old face mask was the only object he could get a hold of. <laughs> Mark off 15. Percy Penn says here, yep, face mask, at the 44, that's now 35 yards of penalties on Ohio State. You see it right here, it looks like an obviously an inadvertent thing. When you see a man turn around like that, you know somebody's got a hold of his nose mask. So the penalty helps the tie to a first down at the Ohio State 44. <laughs> Butler wants to throw it. Back to the right side to Ferguson. Fumbles the ball. The ball is lost at the 41. He was really popped by Aaron Brown. Ozzie Newsom on the wide side was pretty much open, but he may be saving it. This program, a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. WKAB TV 32, Montgomery, Alabama. We have six and a half minutes to play in the first half with Alabama leading 7-0 and threatening with Tony Mason now back in his tailback position on the eye. And he's got it. And he runs it to the Ohio State 38, and that will bring up third down and about four. If they give him the 38, they may give him only the 39. Now 38, that's where it's put down, the 6-15 in county. 
Third down and four coming up for Alabama. Well, let's see now whether or not Jeff Rutledge was saving Ozzie Newsom. As Newsom goes to the wide side of the field and Mike Guest goes over there with him. They may double on Newsom right here. Comes this way with it. He it. And turns it to the 34 and he's very close to a first down. He like may he, have it. It looks like he's got it. Uh, yeah, he's got it, Keith. Woody Hayes calls Aaron Brown one of the quickest, fastest defensive middle man that he's ever had. Here he is tackling Rutledge on the keeper play after looking at Davis and seeing that he didn't have the ball on the fake. Alabama 12 first downs, Ohio State 3. Ball just inside the 34. Davis hammered in the middle to sort of free Aaron Brown and the linebackers. The handoff went to Mitch Ferguson, and though Aaron Brown, having a look at it, slid through there and made the tackle at the 30-yard line, so it'll be second down. You know, there's very Seven. few uh, conventional wishbone plays that they're using. They're changing the pace continually with little counter plays, run-action passes, and uh, confusing the Ohio State ball play, I think. That's Davis. Hit at the line of scrimmage as Byron Cato, number 71, reached out with that big strong arm and tripped him. But Davis's momentum carries him across the 30 to the 28. Now it is third and four. Bolton comes in for Alabama. Aaron Brown has 10 tackles in the ball game. You know, just had to figure that the middle guard and the defensive alignment Ohio State uses have to be in for a very busy day against the wishbone team like Alabama. Well, wishbone, I mean, uh, Alabama is anything but a conventional wishbone three yards and five or just type of attack. They're doing something different all the time. Ruffin. Oh, oh, Steve Bolton. Touchdown. Second and seven. 
Harry Urich has scored again, and Notre Dame now leading Texas 17-3 in the second quarter. Here, Alabama leads Ohio State 13-0 in the second quarter with 3.38 to play. Gerald gives the ball inside, and I mean to tell you nothing as Byron Bragg, that big 271-pound freshman, just let Jeff Loger for a yard loss. It really did. It looked like anybody blocked him. He just stepped across there and really put one on Logan. Byron Braggs is 6'6", 262. He's no little fella. It is third down from the 24 of Ohio State. 88 yards to keep possession. Campbell, the fullback, brings the tailback. Gerald wants to throw. Looks for Harrell. Goes over the middle. It is complete to the big 99. Jimmy Moore, the tight end, up at the 46 yard line. First down, Buckeye. Well, it was no, no mistake that Gerald completed 61.8% of his passes. Here he is, rolling out, gets good protection. Much improved passer over a year ago. I'm sure he's had 62% of them. Wide open, delivers the ball right on target. And Charles Hunter has made a reception. into the defensive front for Alabama. Jones is out now, and Harrell is back in at the flanker position for the Buckeyes, and they send Hunter and Harrell wide to the right. That's a double wide alignment you don't see too many times from Ohio State. Second down, from the 10. Gerald turns up field, and those guys get to about the seven before Wayne Hamilton. Gets his first tackle of the afternoon, number 94, and it was Wayne Hamilton, literally, almost single-handedly, stalled USC in a big win earlier this year. Why, well, he had a great game. That particular play, there, it looked like Gerald was going to get through there. It looked like a pretty good seam in there, and bang, it, Alabama defense closed it quickly. It is now third down from the seven, and he's five. Third and five from the five, seven. Jones and Harrell wide to the right. Gerald coming around. Hamilton is there along with Terry Jones, number 59, the senior from Sandersville, Georgia. It is fourth down for Ohio State at the five. They've got to go to the two to get the first down, and you see we have less than a minute to play in the first half. Springs is out. defensive unit 
dig it in to stop this run just short of the first down. Boy, that was a great job by the defense, Alabama defensive team. Here's Gerald pitching the ball out. Harold McNeil, 28, sheds a blocker and a straight arm and keeps him from getting the crucial first down. Now I would think the tide will stay on the ground and run out the clock to hand off to Tony Nathan as he bangs it from the three out to the five, just beyond the five. 14 seconds to go. Ohio State with three timeouts remaining. Apparently they're not going to spend them right here. Clock is still running. Alabama standing in the end zone and perfectly content to let the clock run out. Uh, broadcast facilities that many of you I'm sure know of and enjoy his work and he's an alumnus of the University of Alabama and well known to the bear and his name is U.S. Open golf champion Mr. Jerry Pate who won that title at Atlanta the Atlanta Country Club you got to be happy well Keith I really am you know I think Alabama on top and they just uh, seem to be a little bit stronger you finished uh, 77 Jerry playing a little better you over your ailments now and got your game back in shape looks like well, I sure do. I feel a lot better. I played uh, one tournament out of 18 weeks. At one point, I laid off that much and uh, finally came back and won the uh, Southern Open and the Mixed Team Championship at the end of the year, and I was very happy to do that. We've got a grand old show coming up very shortly, too, the annual Bing Crosby Clam Bake. I presume you're going to be hailing hardy and ready? I sure will, and uh, even though uh, Mr. Crosby has passed away, I know it's going to be even a better tournament this year. Uh, all the great players are going to be there, and I'm sure everybody will be there to watch uh, all the golfers on ABC there. Play him well. Hit him well. Okay, thank you very much. Jerry Pate, ladies and gentlemen, went to school at the University of Alabama, and you can tell by that big grin he's happy the way things are going today. Well, let's see what happens now in the final 30 minutes of football as Alabama gets ready to receive the kickoff from the Ohio State Buckeyes. Kick is in the air. And Tony Nathan went on the five-yard line. Again, and Nathan makes a great move here, jumping and hurtling over a defender. He comes up the sideline, finding an opportunity. Let's see where it is where he fumbles the ball. Kind of loses his balance right there. Just as he hits the ground, the ball comes out. Still in bounds. Now, possession was not had. It was out of bounds. And we've got a player down on the field that looks like an Ohio Stater with the ball sitting at the 47-yard line. Alabama, possessing the ball, marching almost the length of the field, came away empty early in the ball game in their very first offensive possession. Next time they came down, Nathan took him in for 7-0. And then Rutledge threw a 27-yard pass to Bruce Bolton for the second touchdown. The point missed. It's 13-0 ball game right now. Tom Oras, I think it is, down on the field, taken up for Ohio State. The Alabama Crimson Tide now at the 47th first down with Jeff Rutledge, Tony Nathan, Mitch Ferguson, Johnny Davis, and Ozzie Newsom. The offensive backfield with the big guys up front, David Sadler, Lou Green, Dwight Stevenson, Bob Kreider, Jim Bunch, and the tight end is Rick Neal. And it is the Ohio State kicker, Tom Orris, who was shaken up, but you can see Tom walking off the field now, and apparently he's going to be all right. Defensively now for Ohio State. The Buckeyes seen on the streets of this great old city. Tom Cousinall, linebacker. Dave Atkins, linebacker. Mike Guess, defensive halfback. Lenny Mills, that'll be a four-time letterman. Ray Griffin, another four-time letterman for the Buckeyes. And Joe Allegro, the free safety. Here we go now. First down, Alabama at their own 47. Leading 13 to nothing. And the handoff goes to Johnny Davis. The big fullback coming out of the wishbone. He's up to the 49 for two yards. The defensive front for the Ohio State Buckeyes, and they're a bunch of heavyweights, I'll guarantee you. When you start looking at Paul Ross, not all that big. He's 230, but here he's got a big guy with him. Cato, 240. Aaron Brown has been so busy in the middle. Gary Julen, a 254-pound sophomore. And Kelvin Densler who plays oftentimes the tight side or the sideline side of the field. Defensive end. Ohio State, Dave 
Hopkins pounces on the ball, and there is the first real break of the ball game for the Buckeyes, but Aaron Brown is the man that caused it. From this time, a little misdirection play, you see Aaron Brown shed his blocker, he's to the right part of the screen here, grabs Rutledge from the rear, and shakes the ball loose, and of course it's a big break for the Ohio State Buckeyes. The defensive player of the year for the Bucs comes up with a loose ball. Here's Ohio State at the Alabama 46, and there goes Jeff Logan down to the Alabama 38 before Ricky Tucker brings him down. And so Ohio State, on the first offensive play, after recovering the fumble, they make it work for eight yards. In the Cotton Bowl at halftime, it's Notre Dame 24 and Texas 10. The Irish men handling the Longhorns, Paul Campbell. Is now in the backfield. There's Aaron Brown, who caused the fumble to set the Buckeyes moving here. Ron Green trying to go straight ahead, and there just isn't anything there. As Marty Lyon, the big defensive tackle, just met him high ball to high ball. So we start the third quarter of play with Ohio State having an opportunity, but now they're looking at third down and all of two yards. Murray Lake is out, and they send another lineman, Bruce Hodges, in to beef it up a little bit, figuring the Bucks probably will go inside with it. What they call a robust formation, and it works. That was, wasn't very robust that time. They're fourth down. And they ran right in there. That big lineman, Hodge, just took on Campbell. Hodge, Hanna, Jones, Lyons, Hamilton, Mitchell, the defensive front for Alabama. And it is fourth down and still two yards to go. It's a quick Alabama defensive team and much improved over the beginning of the year. Obviously down 13-0, the Buckeyes have to go. Rojas backfield, it's Gerald keeping. First down as Rod Gerald turns it to the 31. Now that looks more like an Ohio State offense. Let's make to the inside, and Gerald put a good move on. Picked up good yardage in the first down. Crucial first down for him. Carroll, number 11, springs at Logan with Campbell, number 38, alternating in that backfield. The offensive front you see there, the same group that plays the whole first half, primarily. First down at the Alabama 31. Jeff Logan trying to poke his head in there, and he took a whop from the linebacker, Rich Wingo. The Alabama defensive unit, these pictures of the Alabama team from their campus, there's Wayne Hamilton and Marty Lyons, the defensive tackle. Harry Jones, the nose guard. Dave Hanna, the defensive tackle. Huey Mitchell, the defensive end, shown in front of the Arts and Economic Building on the campus. In Tuscaloosa. Second down and nine from the 29, Joe to throw it. Nobody to throw it to. And he is brought down by Marty Lyon. By Marty Lyon. I think you can tell why he's the number one defensive line tackler on this Alabama team. Look at him come across here. Shed the blocker, put the pressure on Gerald. And the one thing that Gerald can do is scramble. But this time he doesn't get away from Marty Lyons. He must have terrific speed to catch a guy like Gerald. There is the loss. Back to the 36-yard line. It is third down and 15. Joe throws it to the sidelines to spring. And very close the linebacker right there to make the play. And it will be fourth down. The Alabama linebacking crew involved in that one, in particular, very cross number 77. Let's have a look at them. Pictured on campus, Rich Wingo, Richie Gilliland, Don McNeil, defensive halfback, made a big play in that first half to stop the Ohio State touchdown. Mike Tucker and Murray Legg, the strong safety, and Ricky Tucker, the free safety. The ball is back at the 40, and Tom Orris will punt. It was a 34-yard punt in distance, but just 
We're in the third quarter of play of the Sugar Bowl. Alabama leading 13 nothing, 7 nothing. First quarter is Nathan blew in from a yard out, and then a 27 yard pass Rutledge to Bolton. That's where we are right now. The tie for the ball, first down at their own five yard line. The Alabama defense still controlling the Ohio State offense. The handoff to Johnny Davis, the fullback. And Davis gets a yard, maybe two, as he fights an awfully heavy pressure. Among those trying to knock him off his feet and succeeding Dave Atkins, linebacker. Some place to be working with the football in that position. Give him a little more than two yards there, right? just beyond the seven. We'll see whether or not Alabama stays conservative down here or whether or not they might try to work with Newsom. They send Newsom to the wide side of the field, right there at the bottom of your picture. He's going to him, and it's too long. Ozzy turned in, turned out, and by that time, he was not able to get to the ball with Mike Guess and Ray Griffin doubling up on him. And through the timing of the pattern off that time, he doubled up on him, good coverage. Golden in and Newsom out. That's a change for Alabama with 9.37 to go in the third quarter and the five leading the Bucks, 13 to nothing. The football is just outside the seven. It is third down. Open play, Rutledge turned to hand the ball off to somebody and there was nobody there. So Jeff jogged up to the 10 and there he was put down. So yep. Alabama's going to have to punt it out of here, and Ohio State could get pretty good field position. Keith, you'd have to guess that Rutledge made the mistake because all the backs went the right way. It appeared to be. They couldn't have been all wrong, at least at the three-to-one ratio. Buddy Holt will punt in the end zone, the first punt of the ball game for Alabama. And it's my guess. And Ohio State does have good field position as Guess is buried at the 36. It was a 33-yard punt. And John Crow made the back Time out, 13 nothing. Sunday, the premiere of a new series, the United States against the world in international amateur boxing. Great slam bang action on ABC. We'll be at South Lake Tahoe this weekend for the beginning of the series, USA Boxers against the world. And it'll be the United States against Romania. The Romanians come in with seven Olympic medalists. Keep on to see. Ohio State coming up to the line of scrimmage. And penalty flags flying all over the field. And immediately Ohio State gets an illegal procedure flag thrown against them. And a call going against them. That's a total of 40 yards on four penalties. Alabama is yet to be penalized in the game. What you see here, Keith, is Logan complaining that the signals, the Alabama defensive calls, apparently simulated the starting count of Ohio State. And he's complaining to the referee. They'll probably warn, the referee will probably warn Alabama, but you can see the first, anytime you go on, a, on the first count, you get this sort of thing. The linemen think they're hearing the Gerald's call, and they, they move. I don't see how they can hear anything down there. It's <laughs> <laughs> Just outside the 40, first down and 15, the pitch goes to Ron King. And he runs it to right around the 38-yard line. Terry Jones and Mike Tucker are the primary tacklers with help from number 77, Barry Krause. Linebackers play a very important part in the defense, as we've seen time and time again. Barry Krause is just a pitch out, avoids blockers, keeps wading through everybody, and almost gets beyond springs that is quick enough and makes the tackle. At the 38, second down, and 13. Gerald wants to throw it. He's going deep for Harold. Harold's well covered and can't make the play. Don McNeil was right there with him. McNeil at six feet. And James Harrell at 5'10. And McNeil made the play. Harold, number 11, 5'10, 186 pounds. He's a senior, two lateral winner. Just drives up the field. He's trying to run the home run, but the ball was thrown behind him. But still super coverage on the play. 
Carroll has been the big play guy for Ohio State this year in their passing attack, averaging a little better than 23 yards. And penalty, as you can see, Alabama yet to be whistled for one. It's third down and 13 for Ohio State. Second time, they've had very good field position. Carroll throws it this time, swings it out to Ron Springs coming out of the backfield as Springs is going to be hit short of the first down. Springs, the leading pass catcher for Ohio State, coming out of the backfield. And the guy who made the tackle, believe it or not, is that big defensive tackle, 250 pound number 93, Marty Lyons. Boy, he's playing some kind of ball game today. He's a junior. Bad news. He'll be back next year. Both quarterbacks in today's game, also juniors, so they'll both be back to form if the opposition next year. Gerald for Ohio State and Rutledge for Alabama. What they're going to go with here. Fourth down. Yeah. They need about two and a half yards. Here, the Alabama 28. Oh, what a great play. Defensive play by the middle guard, Terry Jones. He read it right. And he outquicked the Ohio State center. He got past over and he kicked him for a loss at the 32. Boy, he is so quick. Jones takes the ball. And of course, they were in the defense, the goal line type defense. No one touched him. Not a soul touched Terry Jones. He just walked across there, knocked Carroll down, and Alabama takes over. I'll tell you, it helps to have that big old 47 in there, too, that big freshman. It opens some doors for the rest of the people to do some work. All right, here's Alabama back to the attack. Give it to Tony Nathan. And Nathan moves it from the 32 up across the 35. Joe Electro and James Luffman. Making the tackle for Ohio State. Alabama's weathered two pretty tough uh, situations. The one fumble where Ohio State drove it down, and this, then they got good field position on that punt, and they defense is held both times. And leading 13 nothing, seven minutes to play, third quarter. keeps it as Tony Nathan, the tailback, dives and gets the ball. So three times that ball has come loose on the snap from Stevenson to uh, Rutledge, but all three times they haven't been able to get it. That's not a normal behavior for the exchange for Alabama. Very unusual. There must be some pressure being put on by Brown uh, because we've seen, I, don't, I can't think of another exchange fumble in the previous two games that I saw Alabama. Third down and six. Up to 36. Well, it's going for Newsom. He's got it. First down Alabama at the Ohio State 48. Didn't appear to be any underneath coverage to shoulder a secondary guy. Here you see Newsom just comes straight up the field and just turns a turn in hook right here, and there's nobody between him and the passer. Pressure being put on Rutledge, he throws the ball, and he's tackled just as he gets rid of it. But it worked, first down at the Ohio State 48. They get it inside to Ferguson, and Ferguson goes to the 44. Second down and six coming up, with Denzler and Brown making the tackle at 540 to play in the third quarter. If this game does not change, as you see the passing comparisons there, how many teams, after what's going on with the Cotton Bowl, how many teams are going to be 11 and 1 and arguing about which team is the national champion? <laughs> Nathan! Just about the 40. This is the Southwest Conference officiating crew headed by referee Percy Finn. They've done a good job. Coming up on five minutes to play in the third quarter. The football is sitting on the 40. It is third down. They need a yard and a half to keep it. Nathan, Ferguson, Davis, behind up. Nathan almost slipped and almost fell. At the line of scrimmage as Cato was in there to cause trouble, but he slithered ahead and he may have done it. Take another look at Aaron Brown, neutralizes Stevenson, comes right across, makes the play. 
Keith, uh, he, took, uh, he took on Davis that time, and Johnny just buried him. The only problem oh, yeah. was the ball went the other way. Keith, what do you suppose the bear told uh, his football team at halftime? Half time? You think maybe he said something about the, the score of the Texas Notre Dame game? Being the crafty sort of a fellow that I know he is, I would say yes. I think you might have mentioned it, huh? Mm -hmm. I do for a fact. Well, they're, they're playing... <laughs> Well, I suppose uh, the old coach, Parsinkin, uh, might have said something. I don't doubt that either. <laughs> it is the first down for Alabama. Near the Ohio State 38. And that's Ferguson running the ball inside the 35 to the 34. You can see Ray Griffin, number 44, coming all the way up out of the defensive secondary to help make the hit. But the primary hit was by Cosmo, the linebacker. Texas would be 11 and 1. Oklahoma, of course, and Arkansas play tonight. Both of them going into that game at 10 and 1. Alabama will finish 11 and 1. If Michigan should win, they would be 11 and 1. Penn State's already 11 and 1. That's time it's Davis to be fullback up the middle of the road to the 25 yard line. And that will be another Alabama first down. Ohio State defense just doesn't look quick. Here's a good view of it. He'll just give the ball to Davis and double up on Brown. He spins out of it. As you see, 55, he goes beyond Davis. He is so quick, you think that he was blocked. They tried to double him. He rolled out of it and went beyond Davis. That's some kind of a move. And Johnny Davis has now gone to 1,000 yards for the 1977 season. 69 yards today on 18 carries. And Alabama, oh, another fumble. Rutledge covers it just inside the 25-yard line. So that's the fourth fumble that they've had on the ground, but each time they've been able to retain control. In this program, a special exclusive of ABC Sports, let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. There's a picture of some dejection on the part of Woody Hayes. His defensive unit right now just simply not able to handle Alabama's offense. It is second down and ten. Second man, Nathan, struggling to the 20. Gary Bulin wrestles him down, and that's being right at five yards. So here's Alabama hammering right up the midsection of Ohio State. I think maybe, uh, just guessing what Bear might do here, I think maybe he'll run the ball, try to put that 17 point or the 16 point on the board, and uh, make three scores necessary. Of course, two scores with two two pointers would do it, but let's see whether or not they try to go for the pass or whether they try to just keep field position for a field goal. Third and five. They converted seven out of ten so far. But let's looking for Newton goes short to Ferguson. The Ohio State six. Well, I know how how Woody feels there. Watch Rutledge here. Just makes a fake to Davis, rolls back, and he really drops his ball right in there. Right over the defender. He jumps up, drops it right over the defender's head, and into the hands of the receiver where he's knocked out of bounds at about the five. He's great been play. looking at Harry Gilmer pictures, hasn't he? Great, great, great play. Harry used to climb up and leap and throw and he was a tailback at Alabama. They put it down at the five yard line with a minute and 53 seconds to play in the third quarter. We've got a timeout. AMF presents work. all work, work and no play work. makes another dull work. day. Work. You've got to work, work to live. But if you live to work, you're only living half a life. Oh. AMF says go, recreate, let your other half live. We make Crestliner boats, Roadmaster bicycles, Harley Davidson motorcycles. We make weekends. And weekends make work a lot easier to live with. Well, the weather up here is tough on everything. We kind of feel good that you have a diary. <laughs> 1978 debut with the world's leading athletes in wild competition this Sunday on ABC. Down and goal to goal. Alabama at the Ohio State Five inside the Superdome for the 44th annual Sugar Bowl game. Largest bowl stadium in the world. Roof is nine and a half acres. Here we go. Up over the top. Goes the halfback 
Ferguson, and Mitch gets about a yard. Lined up with four men to the left side of center, just trying to power it in there, but Ohio State's a strong goal line defensive team. They held Alabama in the first quarter on the three. It is second down and goal. The ball is just inside the four. Fourteenth play in this possession for Alabama. version of ABC's Wide World of Sports. Yes, indeed. The folks on the Alabama side of the dome are laughing and scratching right now, aren't they? 21 to nothing, and they are literally dominating Ohio State. That's the only way to describe it. Let's kick off. We'll go to spring. Run at the five. Oh! What an open field tackle in the touchdown play again. Rutledge is having a super day. Everybody bought the package in there that it was a run. Rutledge picked the ball to Davis, and Neal is wide open in the end zone. No coverage. Ohio State gambling that it was a run. There's a two-point conversion. You can see Rutledge looking clear to the right like he's going to throw it to Newsom, and the motion man, and he turns right back to the man that he picked to the inside, Nathan. Nobody home. Two points. Played it in there as soft as a feather. Eight out of 11, 109 yards and two touchdowns. Now here comes Ohio State. Ron Springs for the ball. And he runs it from the 15 out close to the 19. Rich Wingo making the tackle for Alabama. I think as you pointed out uh, a moment ago, Keith, that Alabama defense can really move. That ball started and there were 11 men over there where Springs was with the ball. And uh, that's the mark of a super defensive team that pursues and really moves. There's the scoring drive for the time. We have 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. Doug Donnelly, a freshman from Cambridge, Ohio, now in there at the flanker position for the Buckeyes. They need some points in a hurry. If they're going to have any chance at all. Rod Gerald looks and can't find anybody. He's got to run it. And he runs it out to the 25, trying to get the first down. And he's going to be close to it. As on second and five, he looked at, almost looked at the sideline as if to say, how far do I have to go? Waited for one of his linemen to get in front of him and then stuck his head in there and got his first down. As we talked about at the top of the show, the key thing was whether or not Alabama could contain Gerald. That's the first time Gerald has been able to get out and scramble on a pass attempt, and he did pick up the first down. Up to this point, though, he has not been successful with it. Last play of the third quarter right here. As a man, pass is complete to number 87, Bill Jaco. And Jaco is out across the 35. Another first down. We'll be back with more of the Sugar Bowl after this word about an upcoming show on ABC. Sugar Bowl game, I mentioned at the outset, this was one of the all-time crushes in ticket demand. 76,811 got in. That is a new record crowd here in the Dome. It is first down, Ohio State at the 38-yard line. Carroll hands the ball off to Jeff Logan, and Logan runs it out to the Ohio State 49, and that will be another first down for the Buckeyes. So they 
they get some running room in the middle and they handle Byron Braggs, number 47, at big middle guard. Now he's a big one. He's had a couple of good plays. Of course, he's being blocked out here by Tim Bogler. Bogler, the center, really blocks him on the draw play. Braggs was trying to rush the passer and ran the draw. Ball is given to Spring. And Spring breaks this one inside the left end. And he's now down in Alabama country at about the 42. So that's a nine-yard pickup. It'll bring up second down and one. And the numbers for three-quarters of play. Well, we can see the dominance of the Alabama team. 17 first downs to nine. 147 yards rushing, 109 passing, 256 to 184. And possession time is uh, a little over four minutes. But the big score, the big statistic is the 21 points to nothing. At the Alabama 42, Joe gives it inside to Kimball. Paul Campbell, the sophomore fullback, crosses the 40 to the 38. Ohio State looks quicker on this drive than they have in the previous three quarters. Looks like they're moving off the ball on this drive. Maybe a little pride, a little determination here to try to get back into this game. First down, Ohio State, near the Alabama 38. because he had him open for so long, but he waited. Harold took the ball away to the sideline, comes back into the middle of the field. Gerald had plenty of time, more than enough time, and that was the key to that successful touchdown play. Harold made a great catch on it. They'll go for two. Try to make it a 21-8 to eight ball game. If they get two here, then it makes it a little different situation if they can bang a couple of more in. But right now, Rod Gerald calls time. He wants to talk. Woody Hayes with 13.34 to play in the game. The first touchdown of the afternoon. They're now going for two. They only have one timeout remaining. They come to the tight side of the field and the ball away and uh, just simply nothing doing as Alabama closed in on Jeff Logan and slammed him down. So here's another look at a remarkable catch to cap a fine play by Harrell. You can see how much time that Harrell has. He takes the ball, comes back, and he's looking for someone to throw. No one's putting the pressure on. Super blocking by the offensive line. Finally, Harrell works from the right sideline all the way across the middle, makes a great catch. As Ricky Tucker tries to make the interception, a knockdown, Harrell grabs the ball and goes into the Ohio State's first touchdown. Rod Gerald has just a little bit more than 10 seconds to find his receiver and throw the ball. He ran all over the field. I'll say that from clear to the right side and scored clear on the left side. Great play. Now let's see whether or not they dribble the ball for the onside. We have 13 34 to play in the game. Nathan. Pretty decent tackle in the open field by Duncan Griffin. That's the second one he's nailed today. As he takes Nathan's leg to under him. And the football is inside the 20 yard line. That's so a good play. Let's see now if the Ohio State defense can respond by containing the Alabama offense. Alabama has fumbled the ball four times today. Each time they have recovered it. There have been no pass interceptions. The football is at the 16-yard line. Major Ogilvy in the backfield. They place him Tony Nathan. No! Ball goes to Johnny Davis, the big fullback, and he goes from the 16 to the 21. The other man in the backfield. Let's see. Stedman Sheely is out there. 
So the youngster from Dothan, Alabama, the sophomore, six footer, 186 pounder, and giving Jeff Rutledge a certain relief, and he is a very strong running quarterback. He's, I'll tell you, boy, that shows a lot of confidence by Coach Klein, switching quarterbacks where the momentum shift could be so important here with a turnover. across the 25. Let's see where they'll give his progress. He bounced at the 26. And if they give him the 26, he'll have a first down. He's got it. Uh, I don't think so. They're going to measure or what are they? I think he's got it. And I think he, yeah, he does. I always hated as a coach uh, when something like that happened, like a team scored, and then they pinned us down inside that 20 yard line, the whole momentum of the game can change. The other setback for Alabama. Ball given off to the big fullback Davis inside, and not a whole lot there this time as he works it from, oh, give him three yards, I guess. Big horse really can hit you. Second down and seven coming. Desmond Sheely doing the quarterback in here in the final quarter for Alabama. Nothing wrong with Butler. Davis has wrestled down as he crosses the 33. Tom Cousineau on the bottom of the stack with help from Byron Cato to make the tackle. The winningest coaches, of course, these two gentlemen right here among all active. Bear Bryant with 272 and Woody Hayes with 231. Incredible record. Third and three. Down, Alabama. Uh, the way you draw the old option on the blackboard is good. It really is, but I'll tell you, I really got to admire the, the confidence that Coach Bryant obviously has in Stedman Sheely. You know, this puts him in the ball game at a crucial time, and Sheely responds the way Bryant would expect him to, I guess. Boy, that shows a lot of confidence. Got to be impressed. It's kind of funny, though, looking down on the sidelines and seeing the bear without his hat. 11 minutes to play in the game. First down, Alabama at the 43. Sheely gives the throw. around, he gets a lead block, gives the ball to the right halfback, which is John Crow, gets good blocking up the field, runs it well, looking backwards there, he was looking for someone to catch up, I think. Yeah. Looked like John said, where'd everybody go? <laughs> That's right. Oh, look at that, Stevens blocked that Aaron Brown, beautiful blocking. That's why that play ran so well. First down at the Ohio State 30. on Alabama. Five yards. Well, what I've seen today, Era, the team out there in red could challenge anybody. They're playing, I'll tell you, the game plan that Coach Bryant has put together is really impressive. Offensively, they have given the Ohio State Buckeyes countless number of problems, and defensively, they've come up with a big play with a very good defensive team. I'm impressed. First and 15 from the 35. crowd to get him at the 29 of Ohio State. Picks up the five yards with a penalty and adds on a couple more to him. The names David Sattler, Lou Green, Dwight Stevenson, Bob Quatter, Jim Bunch. Those are the people who are working out of the trenches offensively for Alabama. And they are good. Now they were the first group to beat that Southern California team too. You've got to remember that. A 90-pound freshman is brought down by Aaron Brown 
at the Ohio State 21. It'll be third down and a yard. Well, the only senior in the backfield he's played today, I believe, is Johnny Davis. Rutledge is back, and Sheely, of course, is just a sophomore. Nathan's back. Ogilvy's back. Ferguson's back. There's something else. at the 19 going for the first down he's got it 76,811 the crowd watching this 44th Super Bowl game and Alabama has a first down inside the Ohio State 19 with 902 to play in the game now looking at the stats uh, Keith Stedman Sheely has averaged almost five yards every time he's carried the ball he's at 4-8 uh, carried the ball 58 times so the combination of Rutledge and Shirley should be something for 1978. Uh-oh. Shirley covers it. Right about the line of city. And Ferguson goes back in. John lost his shirt. The rules say you've got to be closed when you play the game. Second down, 10 from the 19. Got it. Inside the 10, inside the 9, first and goal to go, Alabama at the Ohio State 8, and Gary Dillon stopped him, otherwise he would have scored. Is he quick or is he quick? Well, he can run and he's got the quick so he can handle that ball. Take another look at him, he makes the Davis, makes a great play. Defender goes for it, here he has an open seam to run through. Puts a move on here, darts inside, finally tackled from the rear. And his first down goal to go from the Ohio State 8 yard line. Davis. Oh, Sheely kept it. <laughs> half the Ohio State team tackled Davis, and then the other half came over to get Sheely. I thought Davis had it. They will mark him inside the five at the three. back in, Ferguson out in the Alabama backfield. Second down, goal to go, near the three. This time, Davis does get it, and he goes to the one, where it'll be third and goal. Sheely in there, the fullback just sort of has to wait and see whether or not he has it, because he rides it in there so long. You know, the thing, too, is that Sheely has taken from the 16-yard line, I think it was, whether or not down on the kickoff, has moved it down to the one-yard line. And time fall by Alabama. Alabama has two timeouts remaining, 6.33 to play in the ballgame, 21-6, Alabama. Setting the clock moving on third down and goal to go. Alabama's ball, Ohio State one yard line. begins its 17th season Saturday on ABC. Boy, are we going to have some 
arguing over the national championship. The Cotton Bowl, Notre Dame whipping Texas 31 to 10. Here, Alabama's whipping Ohio State 28 to 6. Oh, 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 oh boy. There's going to be a lot of conversation. Yes, sir. Kick is high. It's James Harrell coming back with it to the 26. That's where the Buckeyes are going to have it first down. They're trailing 28 to 6 with 6.26 to play in the game. I am surprised that Alabama has dominated the ball game by this much. Well, the statistics is really impressive, and you wonder why that 28 points is on the board is that in the 13 third down attempts, they've made, Alabama has made 11 of them. Well, so that tells you why. Call it the 25 for Ohio State. They send Donnelly in motion. Gerald back to throw. Gets it off. It oh. is almost intercepted. The ball was deflected at the line of scrimmage by somebody out of the middle of the line. I don't know who it was. Could have been Curtis McGriff. And we've got an Alabama man down on the field. Number 74, David Hanna, was hurt previously, and he's down. Time is called for the moment. The 1977 Hula Bowl comes up this Saturday live from Honolulu at 4 Eastern Time. Time out, 6.20 to play. Sports. 6.20 to play in the ball game, and you see Alabama leading comfortably. Ohio State will have second down and 10 from the 25. Tom Lake comes wide to the open side of the field. Towards the snap of the ball. Girl is good. Goes over the middle with it, and it's intercepted oh. by Murray Leg. And Leg brings it back to the Ohio State 24 yard line. That is the first Ohio State turnover in the game. catch up. This is the kind of thing that happens. Carroll takes the ball to swing from the 23 from the side, looks for a receiver. Alabama's deployed, looking for the pass. It's got a lot of defenders back there. So two men that have passed over the head zone, the post them late catch it. From the 24, first down Alabama, Stedman Sheely flips it outside to John Crow. The second time that that play has worked for a considerable chunk of yardage. Looks like they knocked John out at about the 16, that's nine yards. Uh, eight yards. I'll tell you, I wouldn't want to be defensing that Alabama team next year, I'll guarantee. With that Sheely and Huntley back, I'll guarantee they're going to be a problem. A lot of headaches for a lot of their opponents. Second down and two from the 16. He hammers it to the 13, perhaps close to the 12. At six minutes exactly, to go in a ball game. So Notre Dame is dominating Texas, and Alabama is dominating Ohio State. And Notre Dame and Alabama putting it right up to Michigan and Oklahoma to do their thing in the rose and orange. Sure are. First down. Let's call it the, uh, the 12-yard line as Sheely turns it up. Second and three. Sheely's carried four times. He's picked up 23 yards. And he comes back to the huddle holding his hands up saying, wait a minute, I don't want to run the ball in that traffic. Somebody take it. <laughs> That's the long afternoon for the Buckeyes. Ball is just short of the five. Time, time call. Time called by Ohio State. Their last. 5-12. Well, there are days and there are days. And this one has reached the point now where you just sort of got to stand and watch it. Hope it doesn't take too long to finish it. If you're an Ohio Stater, I guess. Sheely gives the favor. Blue Green and Chip Tillman are the big guys 
Flies on the left side of the line has let Davis in. He's 24 for 95 yards, and Alabama has nailed the list shot. You know, Keith, uh, before the ball game, I thought this would be a uh, one, two, or three point type of game, or maybe a touchdown. I don't think anyone envisioned the dominance that Alabama has shown over this Ohio State team. It's a remarkable performance. Toughman's kick. And 
So Alabama's back in business. First down at the Ohio State 28. And John Crow takes the pick down from Kevin Jones, the third Alabama quarterback of the Buckeyes, picked his pocket and come up with the ball. Sort of hot potato down there, and the Buck switch it and picked his pocket. And so Ohio State gets it back now at 3.39 to play in this game. The football sitting just short of the 28. Logan comes out, Harrell comes out. Harold comes back. Jake goes back. Look out, don't break the leg. Harold slides it into the fullback, gives it to him, and Logan is dropped right about the line of scrimmage. I don't think they're going to want to put it up again. They've had two interceptions in a row. There's not much it can do against the team that's laying back playing for a pass. They're in a desperate situation. See that Alabama has just not only dominated the game, they've dominated this quarter thoroughly. Sure have. Reverse. Here comes the reverse with Dante, the freshman. He speaks to the fastest man on the team, and he turns it upfield and gets the first down out of it. Fine run by Doug Dante. freshman out there wearing both colors, I'll tell you that. Dante is a freshman out of Cambridge, 180 pounder. Well, once again, you can't give uh, Coach Bryant and his entire staff too much credit. They really put together a super offensive and defensive game plan that has worked to perfection. Double wide, open side, they're all back to throw. Over the middle he goes, and that one is almost picked off intended for James Harrell and Ricky Tucker cutting in front. <laughs> for his making his second effort at an interception the last time he tried that harold caught the ball and scored on it boy he would have been on the moon if he held on to it he was flying Gerald is now seven out of 16 for 103 yards he's had two picked off it's all a matter of if you're going to make a mistake where you make it and when you make it alabama has dropped the ball on the ground 10 times today they've only lost two of them and the line must have been firing out well enough to be able to recover those exchange fumbles. 41-yard line. It's second down and 10. Gerald is going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage. He couldn't find anybody open. When he turned back, Wayne Hamilton was there, number 94. He's only a sophomore from Oklahoma, Alabama. He might make Oklahoma famous. Back at the 34. Girl on third down and 17 in trouble. He's got Donnelly open. The had him open. That was picked off by Mike Tucker. Mike's going to bring that football home. There's a penalty flag. That's against the high field. State against the Bucks, refused by Alabama. They'll keep it. Now, he had Harrell open. Now, I don't know whether he keeps not tall enough to see over it or not. He delayed so long. Scrambled out of there. It's a broken plan. It's a broken pattern. There are too many defenders there, I'll guarantee you. Only four. <laughs> what a ratio. 2-0-1 to play in the game. And Alabama now intercepting Rod Gerald for a third time in the game. inside the 35 to the 33. Woodley's had a great day. John 
Fast is on target. John Turpin, Donnie Faust, and Pete Cavett are the setbacks behind Kevin Jones. Bill Henderson's in at the tackle now. Let's move to the guard. Neil Calloway's in. So it's Pip Jones. Keith Hugh is in. Hands it off to the second man. And not a whole lot of room there for... No, it's not either. It's... Uh...
how good a coach I am or how bad a coach I am or how good a coach Woody is, how poor coach Woody is. I think Woody's a great coach and 